For today's video, I want to do a little experiment. Follow the instructions in this video. What it's going to do is it's going to show you how to shine a laser through two tiny little slits and then project what that does against the wall. I really want you to try this because you should see with your own eyes the phenomena that has led to a series of discoveries that has challenged everything we know about light, matter, and reality itself. Super Answer File MLP Luigi said, Can you do a video on the double slit experiment? Yes, I can. Oh, right, here we go. Let's step in the Wayback Machine to the late 1600s, where it was pretty much settled science that light traveled as a particle. There have been a lot of experiments to back this up, and it even had the support of Sir Isaac Newton, and he was not known to be wrong about things. But then a physicist named Thomas Young created the double slit experiment. And it consisted of a box through which light traveled through two very tiny slits, and then a little eye hole where he could look in and see what that did when it projected to the other side of the box. The thinking was that if it traveled like a particle, it would create two parallel lines on the other side of the box because it was projecting through those lines, just like bowling balls flying through pins at the end of a bowling lane. That's not what happened. What he saw instead was the same strange pattern of lines that you're seeing in this experiment. Young recognized what he was seeing right away. It's an interference pattern. You see, when waves combine, it creates what's called interference. Like if you take waves in water, when they hit each other, the peaks will combine to create taller peaks and the peaks and troughs will cancel each other out, which creates this pattern of higher peaks and then stillness. And when that gets projected against the surface, you get the weird double slit experiment pattern. This only happens if light is traveling as a wave. That's the only explanation for this. The test was replicated in hundreds of different ways in the years following this discovery, and even Isaac Newton himself had to concede that yes, light can travel as a wave. But other experiments showed it traveling as a particle. So what is it, light? Are you a wave or a particle? This particle wave duality became known over time as, well, the particle wave duality. And it was a mystery that confounded science for the next 200 years. By the 1920s, the physics community had much better instruments at their disposal, and they decided to add another layer to the double slit experiment. You'll see this over and over again, experiments building on top of other experiments, increasing in complexity and weirdness. So the new twist in the experiment was basically asking the question that if the photons were behaving as waves and colliding with each other on the other side of the slit, what would happen if you fired the photons through one at a time? The guess is that you would get the particle pattern of two complementary parallel lines. After all, how can you get a wave interference pattern when there's nothing to interfere with? So they gave it a try and to everyone's shock and amazement, they still got the interference pattern. But how? <laughs> How? There is nothing for that photon to be bumping into. What could it possibly be colliding with to create this pattern? The answer? Itself. You see, somehow this photon was going through both slits at the same time and then colliding into itself on the other side of the barrier. And this revealed a fundamental truth about quantum mechanics. In a waveform state, quantum objects exist in a probability state, meaning that at any given time, it could go through the left slit or the right slit or hit the barrier. While in a waveform state, that photon is all three at once. It is 33% in the left slit, 33% in the right slit, and 33% hitting the barrier. Actually, that's incredibly simple math. There are highly complex equations out there that calculate probability states with a high degree of accuracy. But eventually the waveform has to go back down to a particle, and that's called the waveform collapsing. In the case of the double slit experiment, that happens when it hits the back wall. And this experiment's been replicated over and over and over again, even with different particles like photons, electrons, protons, even whole atoms and molecules. So now we know that fundamental elements of matter can pop in and out of existence through probability states. But that's where things just start getting weird. Because for the next evolution of the double slit experiment, they wanted to see if they could measure the probability states as they went through the slits. So they set up a little detector on one of the slits to see if they could measure it. This was called the which way experiment. The results shook scientific understanding to its core and remains unexplained to this very day. Because this time, the pattern on the back of the wall displayed what you would expect with particles going through the slits. Two lines, no interference, no waves. This means that the waveform collapsed before it went through the slit. Why? Because it was being observed. This proved that the act of observing the particle caused the waveform to collapse. How is this possible? How can it know that it's being observed? And what is the connection between the observation and the wave function that's causing it to collapse? This experiment has been repeated countless times to the exact same results, and we have no explanation for this. But wait, it gets weirder still. 
John Archibald Wielder created a version of this experiment that he called Delayed Choice. Wish I had a cool name like Archibald. It gets pretty complicated, but the basic gist is that he puts a second barrier behind the first one, and through beam splitters and interferometers, he makes it so that the second barrier could be one slit or two, and he changes that while the photon is mid-flight. And what he found was that by changing the structure of the second slit, it altered the behavior of the particle at the first slit. In other words, the particle was being altered by things that hadn't happened yet. Future events were changing the present. Ow. What the hell? Anyway, when Thomas Young created the double slit experiment, he had no idea the endless series of mysteries he was about to unleash on the world. And he had no idea that these mysteries would shape and confuse our very ideas of the nature of the universe and reality itself. How does conscious observation change the nature of matter? Truth is, we don't know. But it brings up some fascinating ideas. So now that I've melted your brain, I want to hear what you think. Go ahead and talk it all up in the comments. There are no wrong answers here. Thanks so much for watching and to MLP Luigi for asking an awesome question. If you have a question, you can hit me up in the comments or tweet me a question at, at Joe Scott Writer and we can get smarter together. If you learned something in this video, give me a thumbs up. That lets Google show it to more people. And if it's your first time here and you like it, put a ring on it and hit subscribe. I come back with stuff like this every single week. The world's a fascinating place and I'm here to share that interestingness with you. So you guys go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Take care.